Aaron. <laughs> We're live. Hello, Season everybody. Two. Welcome to Three Old Dudes with uh, that man over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, Nico, I have, to, I have to tell you from Scott. You have to introduce yes. yourself with a rap. A rap? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> You have to, okay, you have okay, on the spot, box. and yes, I'm sorry, I'm just thinking Christmas wrapping, but let's, well, it's Christmas wrapping, so this is actually, this is what happens when my wife asks me to wrap something, I do actually start wrapping, so I guess I can, I can do this. <laughs> so. Oh! Oh, no, I can. Are we broadcasting? That. I don't see it. Mm -hmm. I can hear the sound coming across, we are. so I have to mute you on the video, it's working now. Okay. Okay, that's good. Cool. Just right, okay. Uh, we, let me know when to go. Any um, any time? I just got this one. Okay. We are broadcasting. Um, <laughs> here we go. Here is my solo. Um, kicking it with you live. My name is Hiko. I'm gonna join the old dudes and not be too much of a dicko. Feeling really good with the three old dudes. Gonna bring you some stuff. Gonna keep it real new. Don't know why I'm here. Don't know what to say. But I'm gonna have fun and talk anyway. Let's kick it off now. Oh my god! Just stop. I don't have a go to. I'm all alone at all. Let's just do it. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. And I got a few lines out, so I'm, I'm happy with that effort. That's, that's the first time we've had we've had oh. coherent singing on this show. <laughs> hmm. oh, I'm oh, sorry about that. Oh. I'm sorry I ruined it. <laughs> oh. It's okay. Slow Dean has just found show the comments. Watch. Come on, show us the comments. Yeah, just 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 down. I, I, it's always fun on YouTube pointing down there. So you know, that's what I yeah, that, that's that's what I have this for, so I can <laughs> see them. And I look uh, down and say, ah, yeah, everything's still where it should be. Last I checked, well, <laughs> that was in you that's know, what, 1994. What we, so say every morning when we get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, one another day. Oh, Eric so, is here. Uh, I do appreciate the New Zealand flag in the <laughs> background and the, uh, the New Zealand South Blanc. Enhancement. <laughs> so, uh, nice, nice to be on this. I, actually, so I've kind of been on and off, been in the comments once or twice and stuff. But it's nice, to, nice to find. Thanks for having me on the show, chaps. Very oh, nice thanks for you. coming. You're very well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Back at you. We've got <laughs> Brian in comments and, and good morning, Sarah. Yeah, who have you got in the comments here? Oh, who you got? I mean, I'm rested. That's pretty good. None of them will go. Oh, oh no, no, all of these people. Hey, There's Mucky Coys. These are all awesome people. Oh, yeah. no commenters. So, yes, yes, the comments. Yeah, I, I don't like how the comments are below the video. Put and, the comments uh, on the Julia side of the video. Well, you know what? I wish they had... Hello, Julia. Hello, Julia. I wish that they would at least oh, give yeah. us an option. You know, wouldn't it be cool if we could just like have a setting option as to where we put the comments? I always want the comments on the right of the screen so that you can see them. And I understand yeah. that some people don't want that. But give us the choice. Yeah. I mean, they're Google. They can do anything, right? <laughs> Theoretically, well, no, that's apparently really not the case. But they, they don't care. <laughs> well, this is true. This is what it comes down to. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's just don't. Yeah. Am I vain? <laughs> the. Uh... The guy that runs the Japan channel, oh, he's got the Silly Old Dude channel as well. He's quite vocal about uh, Google and their insistence on uh, linking accounts and <laughs> all well, sorts of uh, I, I much shenanigans. He, he's been very vocal for, for a long time. For a guy who seems, from where I can sit, he seems to be doing very, very well off YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> he seems to have an awful yeah. lot to criticize. But that's that, that good on him. He's doing very well and he's very good at what he does. So, power to the men. Indeed. But yes. Indeed. <laughs> well, I, think, I, think I haven't watched the Silly Old Dudes in a while, actually. I used to watch it. I, I, oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I, I used to watch it and get really aggravated. And you know how there are some channels like that that you watch just to deliberately aggravate yourself? But yes, I, I, I stopped. <laughs> I decided it wasn't medicinal. <laughs> 
By the yeah. way, so so Robert, I I, I got a question. You okay? How, how are you making yourself all blurry? Uh, oh, your that's uh, Google Effects. Google Effects um, does that. <laughs> yeah, one of the new features. Um, their background. Well, I, I just use this. <laughs> oh, sweet. I I, I I I just love like new new stuff like that. New features. Whoa. Okay. Hmm. Wow. So they've got blue background. Well, I I I've switched from bananas today. This uh, in, in honor of this gentleman, and I, I now have something round, round and hairy in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. But I'm not going to try what Molly suggested and then well, and, and, and bite right long. it. <laughs> Looks good and fast. Apparently, it's very nice. These are my children. <laughs> you don't want it? Okay, fair enough. I like it. You can. <laughs> well, check it out. The, the blurring it works. Yeah. I, I have some sheep as well. <laughs> oh, sheep. I'm interested in that. Where are they? It's. Oh. Uh, uh, we can only see. see I'm not quite sure. I didn't. I didn't check on that. <laughs> we can't see your mouth, Simon. <laughs> can't see my mouth. Oh, sorry. Oh, well. I shall get rid of my lower third. Everybody knows it. Very annoying. I'm sorry. I can't find my lower third. That's I am very annoying. Oh, the lower third would be on the left side. Um, you're looking for the Hangout toolbox. Right, right. So I've got that. I'm so, I'm sorry to have a tech support session on this live. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. So which one is it? It's got like <laughs> people. Oh, there it is. Lower third. I'm sorry. I've got it. I got it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it on. I it's know a sort of like a with my face as possible. Oh. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I'm, I'm disappeared behind my lower third, and I can't open the damn toolbox. Uh oh. This was not anticipated. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and where do I just turn this on? Oh, Mark, turn on there. There we go. Open yeah. toolbox. Oh, it works. It works. Okay. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, God. Come on, back on. This is very exciting, isn't it, people? Um, this is what you took earlier for. <laughs> yeah, this is Simon's steam powered laptop. Don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. Almost. In manner of speaking. It's, so, so, uh, hooray, it's gone. So I'm interested. Like, I know the topic today is like philanthropy, corporate philanthropy, yeah. right? Yeah, how, just, how did you guys come up with that? It's almost, it is somewhat of an oxymoron at times in Japan, in my experience. It depends on where you are. How, how did you guys even get that subject? Uh, that was me. Um, yeah. Just at my company, we have a big campaign every year starting in September for yeah. one of the local charities. And a lot of companies do the same thing and they sort of compete to see who can raise the most money. And it's gradually been tapering off every year as the economy gets tighter and tighter. But I participated in the past and I was just wondering what it was like over there. So, so what is the, can I ask, what is the charity? It was the United Way. Okay, which I'm not familiar with. What is that? Um, it's sort of like um, a Salvation Army, but it's a little more... Than a Salvation Army kind of thing. Yeah. It's a pretty, it's a pretty um, big charity over here. Yeah. So it's focused on helping. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. So Hel oh, yeah, it's mean, helping. Uh, yeah, less fortunate, basically. Um, oh, so, and this is for Canada or, or Japan? Uh, this is for Canada. Gotcha. Okay. So, oh, that's interesting. So, what kind of stuff do you do for that? Well, what I did one year was take people's submissions for. Recipes, and I yeah. put together a cookbook. Oh, wow. so that was a little bit of work, and I used only Microsoft Word to do it, but I got it done. Yeah, and um, it was a popular seller. Cool. Um, this was this from staff members. Suggestions uh, from staff members. Yes, from from staff members. There's, hmm. I got quite a few of those. Hmm. So I did a lot of typing. And some graphics and, and some pictures and things like that. Yeah. That was fun. And so this was just at work, everyone just thinks of different ideas. Yeah, the um, they they sell branded clothing. Yeah. Like company branded clothing. They sell well, every Wednesday they have a pizza day 
<laughs> in the subway stations and sell pizza. Wow. They also do. They offer everyone everyone the opportunity to donate to the charity directly from your paycheck every year, automatically. Hmm. That's usually how it kicks off, and then there's. Oh, that's and there's the barbecues along the way. Book sales. And, and, and New Zealand and Australia, the sausage sizzle is a real is a real big one for uh, whenever you want to raise money for anything, which I kind oh, of miss yes. actually. Yeah. The old the shopping what? center car park sausage sizzle. There's mm. always a uh, Freemasons. Uh, <laughs> Was that sausage kind of barbecue? <laughs> Freemason sausage sizzle at uh, Bunnings, <laughs> where I live. <laughs> Bunnings is a hard need sausage for people who don't know. But uh, well, what was that? The Freemasons need sausage sizzles. I thought they <laughs> controlled the world banking system That's or something. The, oh, I thought, that, yeah, I thought they were all in with the Illuminati and stuff. But yeah, apparently oh they God, need I mean, sausage honestly, sizzles. <laughs> if, if the Freemasons are having a sausage sizzle, I'm taking all of my money out of the bank right now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Maybe it's maybe it's just the Australian one. Yeah, right? you, don't, you don't know the secret. You don't know the secret is a handshake. Yeah. I, I think it's a little like this, isn't it? It's like. Uh, <laughs> wow. Oh dear. Uh, yeah, but um, go well, figure. Well, well, we, 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 we've oh. gone straight there, haven't we? Really. Well, that, I mean, speed, speed's just said. By the end of the hangout, we'll have moved on to something in the genital genital region, but we we, we went there straight away. <laughs> <laughs> sausage sizzle. Look, if it, may, <laughs> yes. <laughs> hmm. if it makes you feel any better, speed, penis. There you go. We've got it out of the way. Happy. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what, do they have anything comparable to, to sausage sizzles in uh, uh, Japan or Belgium? Uh, or Belgium or that like <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you have to explain. Lisps. <laughs> I'm I in Belgium. Because... Sorry. Yeah. No, I, under, I understand that. Uh, I love asking how's it in Belgium because it feels like I'm talking to Doctor Evil. <laughs> <laughs> what did they do in Belgium? <laughs> it, 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 it's pretty awful. It's, uh... Yeah. It's they about to, uh, five uh, degrees uh, and then uh, grey and. Then it like a, a muscle sizzle, sizzle or something, or a, a, a Belgian fries muscles, or something. Muscle sizzle. <laughs> my muscles never sizzle. I, I, sorry. I, 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 well, yeah. <laughs> Neither does my sausage. <laughs> yes. Once you get over yeah, four. Get room too. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Yeah, just more more of a kind of a warmish kind of thing. Uh, no, so with Japan, I must say, I, I, I do kind of miss the old sausage sizzle, actually. Like, uh, well, you know, the conversation isn't changing, is it? No. Um, there, Excuse there me, are... my children are interrupting. Go, go away. That's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there are many people watching, dreaming of having kids one day that can totally go away. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in Japan, I must admit, I mean, there are community things. There's always the community matsuri, you know, Same where the gospel. people from the local community will do the, you know, the the um, yakisoba and, and you know stuff like that. And there'll be like the stands, and it's set up like the sausage sizzle, but it's not the same as doing for um, charity or you know for for the for the. RSA or whatever, yeah. like we used to do when I was a kid. It's not the same sort of a thing. In terms of like actually charitable, I, I know that a lot of foreign companies in Japan are very big on doing some sort of going and picking up rubbish day, which is tough in Japan because I know that they all show up somewhere and there's no rubbish. You know, they have to go around looking for it. Um, but yeah, yeah, they they. I've heard of foreign companies that have these kind of you know employees go and do volunteer work. Certainly after the earthquake, there was a lot of companies that was very big on you know donating. Um, stuff around them, but in terms of like the standard fundraising for charity, why this is an interesting topic to me is I used to work in um, the biggest property insurance company in Japan, in one little department of theirs, and one of my random roles that I had was checking their um, corporate social responsibility report that they would issue once a year, which you know for big big companies is a big deal. It's like their it's their combination of their eco friendliness and social awareness report. 
Yeah. So it, it, any kind of charitable activity, you know, done within this entire enormous conglomerate, and this is like one of the top three. It's a, it's pure domestic. It's not international. It's called Tokyo Marine. Uh, but they're like one of the top three insurance companies in the world, but no one has even heard of them outside of Japan. Wow. But wow. It, every single cha- they're, they're like the survey one or two months before this report got put together. No, I can't say asking, I've ever been. Yeah, yeah, it's not well known. But they'd ask anybody, have you done anything charitable? Just tell us. And they put it all together and it goes into this very thin report, which I'd put into the English version. And I remember some of the, some of the things which are coming into the report, <laughs> and it was my job to make sure it was all expressed in a you know, positive way in English. And they had things like I remember one year there was um, you know, uh, uh, where this year, in order to you know be environmentally friendly and uh, save the Amazonian rainforest trees, we decided to not send Christmas cards to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, not sending oh, you know, our charitable work for this year was not sending Christmas cards uh, or Nengo or New Year's New Year's cards. I was like, really? Are you really going to show most about that? <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah, I must admit the the the. the well, let's try. That should be not charitable. That should be charitable. Not send anybody Christmas cards. Yeah, yeah, that was like that was we're helping society by we're, 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 we're cutting everybody off. Hmm. Uh, so it was tough. I don't know, but the thing is, and it's interesting in Japan because you have a lot of homelessness. For example, you do have you do have the same set of things. You have the joblessness, the homelessness, the you know, and. And those people, there's not a lot of social welfare supporting those people, and a lot of those people survive off, you know, for example, what you what from what I've seen on TV and so on. For example, you have the convenience store managers that will give the expired bentos to the, the local homeless people. Will know what time to come, and they'll know the camera yeah. in the back. And the manager, there'll be a nice manager who's told to throw them away, and rather than throw them away, he'll give them to the homeless people. You know, they're only you know over, an hour over. There's nothing wrong with them, That's and stuff like that. And it happens throughout oh, the yeah. society. But in terms of a company, like in an organized world... We'll have to, we'll have to tell like Jake about the idea. And Jake can go around to supermarkets yeah. and get oh. free food. Jake, this is Jake who? Jake Norton. Norton. Jake Norton. Okay, so Jake Norton. Was, he's he, he, one of our gang. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I was worried you were going to say Edelstein. And I was like... <laughs> he, he's now teaching in... in uh... Yeah. He's in training at the moment. He's been over there for two and a half weeks. He's so. probably teaching right now, huh? Moment. Right, right. Well, it's you know, yeah. honestly, teaching in Japan, you know, is, is yeah, it's like, got it's got a, de- a, a degree in in in, in, in biomechanics, <laughs> which makes it more qualified than most of the teachers there already. Honestly, it's like that episode of The Simpsons where they let <laughs> Bart right in the back of the police car and they just gave him a gun, like you know, on the first chase. It's pretty much what teaching is like in Japan, from what I understand. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well, straight into it. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, like philanthropy. I guess you have the disaster relief things. So and it's happened a couple. You've still not shown me your watch. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm still hiding it. <laughs> yeah, I saw your video, but yeah, didn't really it's... understand much of what you were saying. However, that's ah, all right. Ah, I was just saying, awesome, 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 over and over. It's mostly ah. gibberish. I make a lot of it up. What, t- what time is it? What time is it, Hiko? Hiko is the well, time. let's see. Yeah. Current time is well. I mean, as anyone can read, <laughs> hmm. uh, that is nine. Am I holding this the right way? Where is this? Nine fifty-five, according to that. Totally good. So you can see there's the nine on the inside ring. There's the nine, and that's a fifty-five at the top up there. So it works, and it's cool, and it's I awesome. Have, I have absolutely no idea what that is. What the hell is it? <laughs> It's just a watch. It's an LED. It's a, it's a watch with an LED display. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's a you know, this, this company. I, I gotta say though, I gotta admit this. Um, <laughs> well, you know, they're they're, we, they're it's a weird company. They're called Tokyo Flash Japan, but the website is not accessible from Japan. It's only accessible from outside of Japan. Uh, I could see it on the proxy at work, but I can't see it from home. And everyone who when I mailed this afterwards, everyone was telling me that they can't see it. How did I see the website? They don't have any sort of an address I can find in Japan, and when I ordered this, it came from Singapore. Hmm. But, oh. but ah. yeah, it's funny. But but at the same time, they're like super bright. Like you go to the website, and it shows like movies that they they, they give these things to so like movie stars, and it's shown up in movies. And that, I know that, I've heard a rumor that some YouTubers even got them for free. You know, like they were contacted and said, "Hey, can you wear this?" And I mean, Victor got one for free. 
and so he's showing it off and promoting them and stuff. And I'm like, I'm much more famous and, and, and almost one. as good looking. Uh, hmm. But they don't send me anything. But I actually kind of actually really like it. I wanted to get one of these for a while, so <laughs> I just bought it. I just went, and, yeah. So I'm, I'm like, and it's awesome. I'm actually quite it's satisfied with this. I mean, it's just a Tron watch, basically, but it's, yeah, it's cool. So I am satisfied. The other thing which I got is, uh, where I put it? It's so miniature. It's so miniature, ah. I can't find it. <laughs> oh, uh, oh to, excuse me, I've just seen a new comment. Uh, it's called Ramsey Barabia. Yes. Yeah, I speak Netherlands. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ramsey, my man. G'day Ramsey, how's it going? Ja, ik, uh, Englishman in Belgium, Flanders or Wallonia? Ik ben lang in België, maar ik ben een Engelsman. Oh, uh, speeds off to take uh, his son to Jiu Jitsu. Bye! Bye! Oh, okay, see you soon. <laughs> well, so, so Ra Ramsey is Belgian speaking. Is this, is, I, I didn't think there was like a Belgian language. What's the story with that? Yeah, I know that they speak French and Dutch kind of slightly differently, right? Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the northern part of Belgium, they speak Flemish, which is a, a variant of Dutch. It's a bit, it's like the difference mm. between English and Scottish, basically, um, well, uh, in, in terms of uh, unintelligible. The, the way it's spoken. And, well. uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you don't spit everywhere. And um, and and the, the southern half of the country speaks a, a, a French dialect um, yeah. uh, called Wallonian, right. uh, and then and then there's a small group of people in the east part of the country that speak German. There are actually three official languages in the country. Yeah. Well, I actually have a Belgian and boss technically, a Wallonian. French and the Dutch speak on each other's throats, but basically, it's not all all. Peace, love, and harmony. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah hang on. Yes, this was in case you you couldn't see the sheep in the main in the main pitch. Ah. Oh, it's beautiful. I think it's a merino. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. But a fine specimen at that. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! You give me a sausage sizzle. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, where's speed? Where's Stu? We need Stu. <laughs> He was going to be here. He told me he was. But, um, yeah. Um, yeah, in Australia. We he probably drank that entire days. bottle of, uh, of Southern Comfort <laughs> and, and fell asleep. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, we have two two languages in Australia: Australian, English, and Bogan. So. Uh, <laughs> That's I'm three. <laughs> it is. It is. It's awful. <laughs> so. Which, so Actually, which part uh, of oh, this is, is just in reply to Ramsey. Uh, I've been al 17 years in Belgium. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What was that you were asking? Ran random, random. Dude, we're, Nick. We're, we're, I was just, we're, we're, I was just explaining to Ramsey how long I'd been in Belgium. Ah. Uh, yes. Uh, we're talking over each there other. There we go. Sorry, turn everybody off. See, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I so, think you asked where I am in Australia. It's yeah, it's, it's yeah. old dude. We're old dude. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Which, which, which uh, South way? Australia, uh, in uh, uh, a uh, place called the asshole of the world, Elizabeth. <laughs> ah, Port Elizabeth. Why have I actually lived in Waiuru, which actually <laughs> I, I, I can tell you in New Zealand beats beats it. But uh, can, can, can South Australia is cool. Yeah. You guys actually speak reasonable English there. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I just, <laughs> I'd rather be in Japan, to be honest, I, <laughs> or, or uh, um, well, well, yeah, no, just Japan, uh, I'd, I'd love to live in Japan, uh, but my, my family won't move with me, so I'm stuck here. <laughs> well, um, the grass is always greener, I mean, you know, you've got a good lifestyle down there. I know, yeah. Well, I mean, I do love Australia, but I, I've got to admit that I do uh, hate bogans with a passion. And, ah, uh, bogans. <laughs> are there still bogans? I, just, I thought that, that bogans are such oh, a Oh, no, there, there are, are, there are. There's, a, there's a, uh, a, a TV show at the moment called Houseos that, yeah. that uh, yeah. is, is 
It's doing the rounds. Uh, my, some of my family watch it. I refuse to because they, uh, you know, the, the, they utter the, the, the catchphrase, uh, what was it? Fuck off or I'll thong you. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, it's I catchy. just... That's, that is no, catchy. I'm going to use that tonight. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Americans would no, take no. that totally <laughs> in a different way. You realize that as well. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> that, that's if, that's if, that's if it is. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's a love hate relationship with me. I do love Australia uh, a lot, but mm. uh, uh, the the uh, the racism Australia. and uh, Australia. Australia. Uh, oh, yeah. New Zealand is uh, getting a really hard time. I, 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 yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> no, no. Well, yeah. Australia. I, I've lived half my life in Australia growing up, and I'm, my mum's Australian, so you know I end up there right now. So Australia is technically my home more right now, even though I'm a Kiwi. But uh, I, I know what you mean. I mean, oh, Australia is a great place, and I've probably eased up on it since I've been in Japan as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I've been more comfortable I, with my I, dark Australian side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, it is a, it's a total. Um, I've already said that. I'm not going to repeat myself. Yeah, I just yeah, it's a love hate relationship. I do love it, but the, the uh, uh, it's got some major problems, and the government isn't helping. Uh, they're really not so. <laughs> uh, Especially with the whole, what well, we're talking about philanthropy, I suppose, in, in a way, the uh, um, the subject of uh, asylum seekers uh, in Australia is rather touchy uh, at the moment. You know, uh, well, Aussie politics is pr pretty. I honestly, well, I mean, I, there's a lot of things with Australia. I kind of when I see the news or whatever, and I, I do separate it from my family and the people I know and love there. But oh my God, the politics there is just so. It, honestly, it's. I, I don't flinch so much when I watch pro wrestling, you know, it's kind of like <laughs> pro wrestling is popular yeah. and you sit back, but Australian politics is so rough and, you know, they're just so bottom of the barrel. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's short, short yeah. of Taiwan where they have the all-in brawls. I mean, they don't need to because they they can, <laughs> just from the verbals, it's so rough over there. And, yeah, Indeed. taking the, the, the asylum thing, of course, is an example of just... Uh, how low can you go? <laughs> I mean, yeah, can you exactly. find anyone oh, no. poorer or more vulnerable that you can get the shit out of to, 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 to get cheap votes? Is there any way? You know. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, I just want to punch Canberra in the face, you know? <laughs> well, Canberra's pretty small. You could probably do it if you could a good swing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well... Um, <clears throat> What is it with Canberra? Yes. You know, Canberra is. Oh, like Hiko, uh, uh, Ramsey is asking you. Do you yeah. speak Maori? I can speak a little. I can speak phrases. I used to. I used to take Maori lessons in my one of my schools when I was a kid. I used to live in some kind of majority Maori areas. Mm. I couldn't really have a conversation. I could. I could. What happens when you live in rural New Zealand is you is you mix a lot of Maori expressions and 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 words in with mm. your English. The more married the area you're in, the more you mix it up. Hmm. Although I've never been immersed. I know there's, big, there's a bit of big movement. It's a bit like Welsh. There was a time when the language was really it was, was at risk of dying out, and the government kind of realized that they had to, it was their responsibility. For a time, you know, New Zealand being, you know, guilty white people, we banned the Maori language, even though it was the indigenous language of the country. And uh, just when it was yeah. about to wipe out, they kind of brought it back. And I was very lucky. I actually had an 80-something-year-old Maori teacher. He was actually an elder who, who grew up. He was one of the, the very last of the generation who grew up speaking it, like, at home. Oh, cool. And uh, with, there was a big government-sponsored revival of the language around the time I was in primary school. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it was kind of it, it was very cool to have a teacher like that. So I can speak phrases, I guess, bits and pieces. And I can understand bits and pieces. But uh, And I can recognize the mm. sound of it. Uh, you know, if I hear a song in Maori, I know it straight away. And I can differentiate it from Hawaiian, Polynesian, or other Polynesian dialects. But, you know, it's uh, Maori's cool. It's very similar to Japanese. Not, not a lot of people know this. They actually have have um, same... Well, yeah. Fashion. I mean, the... the, 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 the Japanese origins are, are partly Polynesian as well, so... Uh. Well, yeah, they actually traced, apparently through the pottery, and this was very controversial when they figured this out. It was only about 20 years ago someone figured this out, but the accepted uh, lineage of Polynesians now is that they started out in Taiwan. Um, the indigenous people in Taiwan, mm. 
um, they traveled through Philippines, Indonesia, out through Papua New Guinea, out to Fiji, and they all kind of, you know, got to like Tahiti, Tahiti somewhere, and some went north and some went south. You know, New Zealand was one of the last countries mm -hmm. they got to, but they all came from Taiwan. And so it's totally logical, if you're talking about going back 2,000 years to the indigenous people in Taiwan, the fact that the word for shelf is the same in Maori as in Japanese, the fact that they've got a, a bunch of mm. common words in common, it makes complete sense because obviously, I mean, there's no way yeah. that you could not have some Taiwanese people arriving even by accident in Japan. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's really, it's really cool, actually, and it means that it means the Japanese people mm. come to New Zealand and they really show up the Pakeha's, they show up the yeah, white so people they learn Maori because they pronounce it much better than white people do. Mm. So my son, actually, like my, my grandma got my son uh, uh, a teddy bear that does the, the All Blacks haka, you know, the, the, the war dance from the rugby. Yep. And he's, had that for he's had that for a couple of weeks, and he's already memorized it. It took me till I was 15 before I could memorize the haka. My son learned it in like two weeks, and he learned it off a voice recording from Maori, and it, partly, I think, because it's, it's the same pronunciation as Japanese, intonation... Perfect. He wow. actually does it better than me, and he's memorized the whole thing in one week. Oh, <laughs> it's kind of blew cool. my mind. I was kind of just going around the house sort of. Well, whenever I say "camo," which is like "get ready," you know, if I say "camo," so does, does your son sort of, play rugby? Uh, we play. We kind of play. Well, he's four years old right now, so you know, we kind of. Have play, you taught play him play rugby? rugby. I'm teaching him. I'm in the process. I've taught him how to rip a ball. <laughs> yeah. You know how to. How, I, I, I've taught him a few of the basics: how to tackle, how to how to throw up a pass, but. But um, but yeah no 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 so whenever I say like a cat model, yeah. well, whenever you oh, my, 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 my two sons love, love to watch rugby yeah well whenever I, you know when the All Blacks all get into a circle and the captain kind of walks around looking kind of tough and then he shouts out camo and then everyone goes ooh like this so now whenever I shout out camo at my son just randomly he immediately ooh <laughs> he starts doing it it's <laughs> awesome and I've been trying to persuade my wife to let me put it on YouTube. Cool. Because that is my that is I can retire on the video of my son doing that, but she won't let me. So <laughs> <laughs> I would I wouldn't imagine rugby would be really big in Japan. I've oh, heard it, 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 it. Hey, rugby is huge in Japan. In really? Japan, rugby is the I think I, I think Japan is in terms of the number of players, it's like the second biggest rugby country in the world, more than New Zealand. I had no idea. There are 150,000 registered rugby players in Japan. Well, you learn something new every day. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> and you know what? It doesn't suck. People make up lots of excuses. It doesn't suck because of the physique of Japanese, and it doesn't. It, it, it's just that the system is so locked into the amateur system of just focusing on a few university teams, and the university teams pro, uh, take priority over the professional, over the club teams, and stuff like that. So they're kind of held back playing university rugby until they're 25. Or 24, and and that's the only reason, and, and only for a few teams, and only for the people who get into those universities. So it means they've got a pool of 150,000 players, but they don't even look for the talent, and they don't develop the talent. Um, physically, there's no difference in size anymore. So you know, Japan is just a huge waste. Um, you know, I I've played rugby in Japan, and I know even playing friendly club rugby, there are some awesome players, and there's just no system for picking them up, which is the shame. But no, yeah. Japan is. Well, it sounds I mean, like it's yeah. like it's like in Belgium. I mean, it's like cricket and rugby. In Belgium, <laughs> it's like they, they, it does exist, but you, really? you know, trying to trying to find it or see it anywhere is like impossible. <laughs> you, you, it's like secret societies of rugby players, yeah, <laughs> cricket players. <laughs> cricket players, I could I could definitely well understand. Well, I guess what you get the South Africans perhaps go go to Belgium and stuff as well. Maybe you get that that kind of thing. I know the Dutch team is full of South African guys who are all into all of that. Hmm. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. I mean, rugby is big in Japan, actually. Oh, secret, it's we're, it's old. Not yeah. of, uh, of Belgian rugby. <laughs> yeah, that, that sort of leads into this random question number three from Ramsey. Hmm. All Blacks versus Wallabies versus England. Who would win? <laughs> <laughs> oh. All Blacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, okay, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Walk all um, over them. Wallabies okay. would win if they didn't have Aussie rules and rugby league um, taking away all of the, the a, a lot of their talent. If, it's a bit like America, you know how we're all glad that America doesn't actually notice that the rest of the world plays soccer because if they did, you know they're gonna have a they're gonna have a soccer team or a rugby team of just all all O.J. Simpsons, you know who who. <laughs> and it, I know O.J. Simpson's famous for being a rapist and murderer, but he was also you know. Uh, uh, 
a hundred meters in ten seconds, uh, you know, ten foot tall, you know, bloody wonder athlete, right? And America's got like you know ten of those, you know, can can put together a whole team of those for any sport, which is why we're glad that we just let them play ice hockey and American football. And Australia's a bit like that as well. Um, they've got a lot of distracting sports which take away their talent, which is why I'm very glad that yeah, the Wallabies are not as strong as they probably should be. Um, and, and England just sucks. Yeah, that's why we'd beat them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not a huge uh, fan of sports. You know, I don't I don't follow a lot, but I I dip my nose in every now and again when uh, the All Blacks and the Wallabies are playing, or you know, whatever. But uh, yeah, uh, I do know enough to know that Australia sucks at the moment. They're just all nah, but the thing is, Australia's like this, though, <laughs> and this is like so. That, you know, like like the soccer is like with rugby as well. Everything just cycles around there. Every four years, have the World Cup. And New Zealand is always the number one team, and we always win consistently all the way through, and then we choke every World Cup. And Australia sucks. Australia is like, you know, they have these terrible crisis periods, even 12 months out from the World Cup, but they have this way of just coming up and, and just winning and getting form at exactly the right time and beating us. And so, you know, that, 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 as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's, it sucks being a New Zealand fan because when we win, it's expected and it's not interesting, and when we lose, it's just crushingly depressing. Hmm. Whereas if you're an Australian fan, you expect to lose, and then they actually win a lot of the good games that count. So yeah, I, it's not. Yeah, I, I'd rather be a Wallabies fan on some levels. Not uh -huh. that I would rule, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quite understandable. <laughs> so how about like hey. uh, in so in Belgium? I guess it's also you. You guys do the right of you guys follow sports in Canada or Belgium? Uh, me in Canada, I'm not a big sports guy. <clears throat> yeah. Um, here, here yeah, I, mean, I, I never was. Like uh, the 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 rally drivers, uh, Sebastian Loeb and um, uh, Freddy Loire, uh, but they're mostly sort of from the, uh, the the southern half of Belgium in the sort of the, the Ardennes region where there's decent de decent uh, rally rally uh, tracks and stuff. As so the German the, that's the main. Although well, the Belgian football team, the Belgian football team got beaten by Japan the other day. That was quite, yes. quite good. Well, I, I do this because I normally support Japan with, with with soccer. But yes, but yeah, I mean, I guess they've always got some good players there. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I I had a thought there for a minute, which I've dropped. But yeah, no, it's uh, with rally driving in New Zealand, like everybody. Because New Zealand's kind of a big country without many people and lots of dirt roads, so you know it's like the rally WC is very big. And I used to have like a Triumph Dolomite 1975 model uh, automatic. It, 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 Whoa! It's interesting. There's no parts for it, so you know at one point the brake fluid all drained out of all of the things, uh, out of all the cylinders, but there were no replacement parts. And before I noticed, it, I was driving at the time. I found out that there that there was no more brake fluid. And so I had a couple of episodes with that car. Like one time, yeah, I, I was coming up to a traffic light and I had no brakes, and I had to somehow get home with no brakes, running three red lights. <laughs> Fortunately, my house was on a hill, so I could, I could use the hill to stop the momentum of the car. Um, but in that car, that other car had also been in a serious head-on crash once, and it had bent the chassis on the driver's side. It, was, it had been a head-on crash. I don't know what happened if there was anybody killed in it. But as a result, the car, whenever you let go of the yeah. steering wheel, just for a second, the car would like lurch into oncoming traffic. It would uh -huh. like, go. <laughs> and so you always had to hold on to it very hard to keep the car going straight. Um, but that was my first car, and I had that for a few years. And it's funny, like, I, you know, I got, I watch rally racing all night, and the next day I just go to the nearest dirt road. And I mean, I'm probably responsible for a lot of the damage on the car. <laughs> that was fun. And, 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 and an infin infinite amount of roadkill <laughs> in your neighborhood. <laughs> there, yes, yes. I've, I've claimed a few bus poles as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how you learn. And that's the problem with having a driving age of 15, frankly, which you have in New Zealand. But, yeah. Oh, that's... So that's, 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 that's if, if Kim, if Kim, Kim was here... Mrs. Speedkin, she she would she she started driving when she was 15. I think her first car was a Ford Mustang. So I mean, she was pretty pretty cool. That's doing pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, what was the first car you guys drove? Um, um, oh, I'm, I'm too embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first car was a 1974 Plymouth Satellite two door, right. and had a 318 two barrel V8 in it. I'm sorry, and did you just say two-girl V8 that I, did I hear? Yeah, 
a two barrel V8. Oh, barrel. I've heard go. I was thinking, I was thinking the guy had two goals. I was thinking no. it's not bad. No, I had uh, a little tiny steering wheel, wide tires on the back, and the front was lowered. And I used to go around nice. all the corners sideways. Yeah. <laughs> oh, in Canada, I've heard of this as well. Like, that's a big thing. You can create snow drifts in, in, in like, uh, parking lots and stuff, right? And crash into them and stuff. Oh, yeah, you can do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my, my, yeah. First, my first car was, it was a, uh, an Austin Mini Metro. I know that no, car. No, very it, well. it wasn't the I rally version. <laughs> Any car can be the, 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 the granny version. version. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that, that's like a $300 car at the time I was in high school. That was a popular car. Well, the Metro. Comic Arena is here. Comic Arena, yeah. No, no, the oh, hi, brother. Hey, brother. How are you doing? <laughs> Good morning, Raina. <laughs> of course, yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm. My, my, my first cars, huh? Yeah, wow. it, Holden or Ford? My, uh, it was a, oh God, it was a Ford. Um, it was a Ford, was a, my, my very first car was an XA uh, Falcon 500. Futura, actually. Uh, nice. That means absolutely nothing to anybody outside of <laughs> Australia or perhaps New Zealand. No, not really. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I used to I used to live near Geelong, you know, where they have the big Ford factory in Australia. So yeah, I uh, like Melbourne's better, but yeah, everyone in Australia can be separated. It's like <laughs> they, they, <laughs> for the many appropriate and inappropriate ways that Australia divides itself. One is between the two types of cars that you're allowed to own in Australia. Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> uh I'd still be uh, hmm. when uh, back in uh, well, God, when was it? 1980s, I think, when they, uh, you know, the Bathurst race. Of course, of uh, course. Yeah, of course. Uh, they, I'm sorry, they, I'm sorry, I they, late, yeah, late 80s, they uh, introduced the the Ford Cosworths. And, yes, I remember uh, the, the Sierra Cosworths. Yeah, they absolutely dominated. Uh, they they, did. they <laughs> uh, but there was a huge cry, uh, an outcry, because it was. Uh, you know, it was doing the Fords and the Holdens in badly, so... Right. And there was still somebody, you know, I can't remember who it was, they were driving around in the Camaro at the, at the time, it was a, uh, I think it might have been, it was a, was it true, Dick Johnson, uh, who was a... Uh, oh, Johnson, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I think, it, anyway. Queensland, there were like old Volvos everywhere, there might have been a Queensland driver, for some reason there's a bunch of Queenslanders full of, it's like, it's like Sweden with like bikinis and good weather. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really yeah. Sad. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen so many Volvos in my whole life. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a random question for everyone, like, I know everyone here is kind of connected with Japan, right? I mean, there is a, there is a common... Thread there. What what is the connection each of you guys have? Well, for me, oh. it's just uh, good night. Sorry, just that. Uh, yeah, for me, it's just uh, 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 an on again, off again, but lifelong uh, interest in Japan. Uh, mm. I, I uh, before I actually started, the first person I think I started watching on YouTube was uh, Kurt Softy Papa, and. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, as well, but, but uh, my obsession with it goes back to uh, childhood when uh, there was a. I've told everyone before, but uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, there was a show on Australia just called The Samurai, um, and this, uh, the guy Shintaro, he uh, he toured Australia in the late sixties. Now I was only very little, and I I got into it into the reruns in the in the early seventies, but. Uh, um, he he actually attracted more people uh, in Melbourne when he landed than uh, uh, more people turned out to see him than turned out to see the Beatles. He was no huge in Australia. It was a, an absolutely massive uh, hit. And oh, really? I had no yeah, idea. So, so it does go back to there. You're just going to have to excuse me for a second. My dogs come in and won't get out for anyone else. Uh, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow, I, I have relatives from near Melbourne, and they they say a lot of things about Japanese people, but not that they're bigger than the Beatles. Hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 
So how, how about you? Um, my you interest, my interest is, is, is rather limited. I mean, uh, I, I got into uh, well, I like Japanese, uh, the Japanese landscape largely. I mean, that's I started watching Kurt's videos. I used to I used to live in England in in the Lake District, and uh, used to work there in a museum and used to get loads and loads and loads of Japanese visitors and I couldn't figure out why mm. and uh, I found out that a lot of them like coming there because it's a, a bit similar landscape with trees and lakes and hills so uh, I was curious about the Japanese landscape and then saw that and started watching Kurt's videos and, uh, and then the lady who's just joined us uh, got me into um, with, uh, YouTube really uh, and I started to like uh, Getting more and more in, into, into this. Thank you, Reina. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, uh, oh, sorry. That's cool, right? yeah. A lot of people think of the, you know Japan as being you know just like they think of cities. They they, they don't appreciate that. Yeah, the the urban human culture is a big part of it. But you know Japan's only is like ninety seven percent you know like. Natural landscape actually, it's just that it's so mountainous, yeah, it's mountainous so and hard. And even from Tokyo, you only have to drive for an hour any direction. Tokyo is not actually a very big city, you know, itself. And you can actually mm. get out into mountains and ocean, you know, pretty easily, or even though it's not the image. And Kurt as well. I, I, I must admit, I, I, I caught on the Kurt's videos later than a lot of people, but um, I'm impressed as hell <laughs> actually at everything that he's done. And it's cool to hear that he's bringing people in and he's helping people appreciate that as well. Yeah. 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 So cool. definitely. And how about so Me. Robert? Do you have any kind of Japan connection? I I do. Um, my first wife was half Japanese. Oh yeah. Half Chinese. And so that got me interested. It was her mother basically that got me more interested in Japan than instead of just a place. Uh, got me interested in wanting to go there. And oddly enough, the Nissan Skyline GTR really pulled me in. Yeah, that was an amazing car when it first came out. You mean when it first came out, or you mean like um, when when um, the one the like the nineteen eighty nine one came out? The Godzilla. Yeah, the Godzilla. When that came yeah, out, yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. oh, what's that? And well, that was after I got divorced. I started dating Oriental, GTR Oriental, 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 Oriental. I went to Japan. I test drove a GTR in two thousand. Yeah, this is part of my vacation. And um, I found um, Mark on YouTube one night when I was looking for a skyline picture, a picture of the Tokyo skyline to put on my desktop. Somehow I found Mark find me and Kermit's video. Right. And uh, through him, I found everyone else. Right. So okay. So you, you, you guys skyline? are all connected. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> What was that last question? Does Mark have a skyline, or was it a connection like that, or how does that? No, work? Um, no, Mark. Mark is just yeah, kind of, yeah, just kind of crazy. I kind of yeah, like well, that. That's true. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I was, you know, drinking beer at the time I found him, and I thought, well, well these videos cool. are fun to watch. They are. So, um, I just watched mm. where he commented, and then I would go there and check it out. Mm. And slowly built up my subscriptions. So now cool. I have a few too many, but that's okay. I have 600 <laughs> subscriptions. I, I don't know what to do. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've driven a GTS turbo. I've never driven a GTR, but I had a friend who used to import um, used Japanese cars to New Zealand, and they let me drive a GTS turbo that they had once. And you know, not the full thing, but. Um, I've driven a few turbos. I, no, I haven't driven any. Well, actually, I, so when I was in Singapore in July, I actually drove a Lamborghini, which I uh, I rented for about like half an hour, and that was fun. But other than that, I've never really driven. It's you know, like until I drove that that Skyline. You're putting the floor down on that. That's something else, isn't it? You know, it's, it's the uh, it's the aircraft carrier takeoff. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, <laughs> I w I test drove the car at really night is. in the rain yeah. in a small in town. I had wow. to drive for an hour to get to a Nissan Red Stage dealership. Oh, lovely! And yeah. I actually wanted to see if I could sit in the car because I have a longer back and headroom's sometimes an issue. And mm. no, no issue there. It was great. And he goes, yeah. "You want to drive it?" And I'm like, "Yeah," but uh, despite going 50 kilometers an hour over the speed limit, I was still only doing 80. So, 
you can't really get a feel for the acceleration, but yeah, I thought the car was actually quite comfortable. Um, I, I, I literally, it was the first time I've ever experienced uh, having to actually pull my head back forward. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I had a very clear strip of road, and I put, and, and you know, it's lovely, you know, you get the turbo leg, you put your foot down, I was like, what's happening? Where? Boom. <laughs> and then you got to pull your head back. <laughs> <laughs> and the car, the it's like someone put, put a rocket on the car. It, it, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Always, yeah. I like the sound of a turbocharger in a car. Yeah. The other one, I actually had another friend. Uh, all, all, all of these, um, you know, Asian students in New Zealand, most of flat with a, with a bunch of um, Malaysian Chinese guys. One of them had a modified MR2, Toyota MR2. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, not, oh, not, yeah. not, a, not a race car or anything, but they're they're a really fun car, big mid -en mid engine car. And they, they they had like an extra air pump on the turbo, and you know because it's mid engine, it's right beside your head. So <laughs> it, and the delay is like two seconds, but when you do it, it's it's like you can uh, it's the, it's like got a vacuum pump on the turbo, and it's right beside your head. So you put your foot down on the accelerator, and there's nothing for a second, and then all of a sudden you just <laughs> <laughs> and with the pull, the car just kind of jumps. <laughs> that was crazy as well. That was again. I mean, it's it's, it's not a supercar or anything like that, but that's, uh, that was a really fun thing. That my friend let me drive his car, and that was very fun. Although that is a that is a car that crashes and kills a lot of people because it handles really badly. Hmm. Ah, yeah, mid-engine. Yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to pick it to handle. Yeah. yeah they, they, I mean, they're, I'm, I'm talking from, from Gran Turismo video gaming experience, and not yeah, from yeah, reality. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm also partial <laughs> to the Mitsubishi Evolution. Oh, the Evo, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, the Evos have always done. I mean, Mitsubishi has just died in Japan. You know, like they, in spite of, because they had this one scandal oh, yeah, where the they were hiding. Company was bought by Ford. Was Mitsubishi was Mitsubishi Motors bought by Ford? I know Mazda was. Was Mitsubishi as well? Well, I mean, they've disappeared anyway. But it's kind of funny because the, with the Pajeros and the the Evos, yeah. and they've always made such great cars. But they had this one scandal where they hid all of the. Um, the complaints and you know the the warranty repairs and stuff from inspectors, and that just killed their reputation in Japan. Like they couldn't sell anymore. Mm. It's kind of a shame because wow. they actually still make good cars. But you know, yeah, they, they, you just don't see Mitsubishi's in Japan anymore, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. Over over here in Canada, once a car is 15 years old, they, they we're to allowed to import it. Oh, is it the most reliable. Old? Yeah. Fifteen years. Yeah, fifteen no. years. So anything from Japan that's fifteen years old is generally in decent shape. Well, this is true. Yeah, in New Zealand as well. It's always like well, in Japan they, they is like after seven years, the uh, car registration becomes basically unaffordable. It becomes worth more than the car itself. So most cars in Japan, yeah. when they get to about the seven year mark, they and this is deliberately designed to encourage people to buy new cars every seven years. Um, and that's why there's a lot of cars that get exported from Japan at the seven-year mark. And when New Zealand lifted all the export restrictions, New Zealand was one of the first countries to get all these Japanese imports, like back in the 80s. And, uh, yeah, it's fun. I mean, we'd always get the best seven-year-old cars, although that now now I think Britain gets them first. But um, there was a time when it was, you know, in New Zealand, every, every kid was, like, always studying up what are the best cars coming out of Japan that are seven years old that'll be our newest cars. But, yeah, I'm so sure when I came to Japan 14 years ago, I had in my mind I was going to buy a Mitsubishi GTO uh, twin turbo. Um, <laughs> I had it all planned out, and it was like, and it would cost like like a fifth the price of what it cost in New Zealand. And I was going to buy this car. And I've been driving since I was 15. I got here when I was 23, and I have not owned a car <laughs> in the whole 14 years I've been here. Wow. Which is kind of as a New Zealander, it's kind of hard to comprehend. But in Tokyo, you know, it's actually it's much it's more trouble than it's worth at the end of the day. Even though the cars themselves are super cheap, owning them and running them, and you never get to use them. Uh, yeah. yeah. If I lived a bit more that, in the country, that that I would talk, that that would probably be the uh, uh, the weirdest thing for me over mm. there is the is not having a, a car or something. If I if I ever got into the position where I could uh, live in Japan for a while or anything like that, rather than just visit. But mm. yeah, because so, a car in Australia it's the same as New Zealand, I suppose. You know, that's uh, uh, yeah, you. If you haven't got a car, you, the public transport yes, is yeah. freaking awful. Yes, yes. So, uh, yeah. It's like uh, not having a house, you know, it's the same kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
And it, it, to be clear as well, in Japan, it is only maybe in the biggest cities and only in the middle of the biggest cities that you can get by without a car. But you really, like in Tokyo, can it's actually more inconvenient to have a car. And it, whenever I need a car, I mean, I might use a taxi, which is very expensive here, or I'll just rent a car. And even I, and I figured, I did the math one day. I, when I used to go out surfing once, every, once a weekend, um, I rent the car for surfing once a week. And even renting yeah. a car for a full day, four to four times a month, is cheaper than just even paying for a car park. Well, oh, yeah, because the parking places, places there are, 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 are abysmal. Yeah. 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 But, this yeah, is at the something I've learned from day blogs. <laughs> yeah. 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 I have the option to ride the bus into work. I don't live too far. But I find myself driving every morning. Just I get that extra few minutes. Yeah. Uh, it takes longer to go bad. home, but... Yeah, I've got a lot of... I, I have two offices with my work, and theoretically I'm supposed to go to both, but one is in Yokohama, which is an hour away, and one is in central Tokyo, which is like 15 minutes away. And there's actually a company policy I'm supposed to go to both, but the fact is that I'm giving up one and a half hours of my life <laughs> traveling <laughs> to the other wow. office. And when you've got a kid, when I've got a four-year-old kid, I mean, that, the time that I lose is the time that I drop him off at daycare in the morning or that I'd see him in the evening. So yeah. that's not really time. I, I, if I can avoid it, I don't want to give it up. So, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. What those, the, those minutes they matter. Yeah, they're precious. Mm. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's extra nap time when I get home. <laughs> well, that's the good thing about the train. At least you can sleep on the train. Although that that, that that's been a dangerous habit of mine as well. <laughs> you can't wake up and actually be like, where the hell am I? <laughs> <clears throat> I actually did. I used to. I used to work. At my first job. My first job site in my first company was like. Um, you know, I lived in a good location from where my training site was. But when I was sent to my first project, it was two and a half hours like north of Tokyo, and we had to be there at first. It, it was Whoa. like a factory, and we were told to show up at seven thirty in the morning. So I had to literally get on the train every morning oh. at five o'clock, and we'd have to work until the last train, like past midnight every night. So I was only eating two or three hours sleep a night. You know, every day uh, during the week. And uh, as a result, the only way I was catching up sleep was just sleeping as much as possible on the train, on the five hours I was on the train every day. But the problem yeah. was, I was on one of these long lines that starts in Tokyo, and it goes up north, like one, one and a half hours. And it's a long train ride, so of course you sit, and you know, it's warm, <laughs> and you doze off. But you know, you wake up, and I've literally woken up in a different, in the wrong prefecture. <laughs> just the time oh, builds up. Yeah. And you see this, the town names, and you realize that there used to be two lines like, going both directions. Now there's only one, and you don't recognize the name of the town. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and I get out and I find out I'm in uh, too far north. That's happened to me. Uh, and now, now, now you've got a more sensible job, presumably, with sensible hours. Yeah, well, it's not a more sensible job, perhaps, but certainly I've got more control over my life, which is, I think, what we all aspire to in slow increments over time as we progress through life. Yeah, um, that becomes a priority, you know. When... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm happy to retire if I can in a year or two. That'd be nice. I keep buying lottery tickets to that end, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So, if you, Dean, if you were to come, I mean, if you were to come up to Japan, what what do you think it would be doing? Have you have you thought about that? Pardon me. Have, have you yeah? Have you thought about what you'd come up come up here doing? Oh, um, no. <laughs> uh, initially, when I, yeah, when, I, when I first started uh, uh, doing videos, I had a plan. <laughs> uh, it hasn't quite plans. worked out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was going to uni. I was just going to get my, uh, my degree, which is rather late to get it, I suppose, at 48, but who cares? Anyway. Um, yeah. yeah, no, no. Uh, Anyway, I was uh, I was thinking about uh, teaching English in uh, in Japan, but uh, I suppose that would probably be the easiest uh, thing to do. But uh, yeah. that sort of all. Uh, when I was accepted into uni, uh, it was under a bit of a cloud for me because they, they they would only accept me if I studied what they wanted me to study. Uh, what being did they an want adult. To study? Uh, it was, uh, um, I can't even remember the name of it now, uh, it was, <laughs> no, it was, it was um, Indigenous uh, Studies in Australian Society. 
my original. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> my, well, it, it, it wasn't too bad, but it just my heart wasn't in it. No, and I thought, well, at 48, going on 50, I'm not going to waste time doing something that I don't enjoy. Sure. Uh, so anyway, uh, my original uh, the thing that I tried to get into, uh, the subjects, and that was uh, um, uh, linguistics. And uh, um, mm. well, see, again, my memory's shot. I shouldn't even be studying anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, what am I studying? Um, what am I doing here? Who's this? Where are you? Who are you? What is <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I, I should eat more bananas. <laughs> or or on me. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was in linguistics and uh, oh fuck, <laughs> I had it and it's gone. <laughs> it's <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, <laughs> uh, originally uh, that, 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 that word apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Who would have figured uh, that one uh, out? What was that? Well, apparently the origins of that word are Norwegian. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> a bunch of Vikings were sitting around one day and decided to invent the word fuck, apparently. That's a good word. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, that, that's all gone, by the way, so... I'd, uh, to wrap up my uh, boring life, and <laughs> but I am going back. I'm I'm going back into uh, studying linguistics and uh, intercultural. Got it. Excuse me. <coughs> intercultural communications. That's what it was. So uh, yeah, uh, that's that's what I'm going to do. But I'm going to have to do it uh, online, which some people will scoff at, but I couldn't give a shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> people always ask up here. I, I'm learning Japanese, and should I use what is that one that everyone says, like Rosetta Stone or something? You know, they're, 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 I don't Rosetta know they Stone. Are. They're like they're like the M way of language learning. Like they they kind of they pop up everywhere, and I don't know if they're like a religious group or something. And everyone asks, is that any good? But you know, in the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It might be good or it might not be good. It just it's down to the how much you apply yourself <laughs> to learning exactly. like, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, sure, you want to make sure that they're not sending you, you know, like uh, crayons and stuff to do the course with, but, you know, so long as it's a reasonable <laughs> course, there's nothing wrong with online learning at all. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I, I passed the bar in New Zealand online learning, you know. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, you know. With crayons uh, or without? Sorry? <laughs> so with crayons or without? So. Both. But when New Zealand Both. actually let you do it, I got admitted there first. And I'm sure you recognize as a New Zealand qualification, so it's actually kind of cool like that, but yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Australia's actually kind of tough. Not easy. Don't, don't tell anyone I told you that. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a big fan of crayons, actually. Crayons are a big part of my life right now. What is, sir? Yeah. Crayons. Oh, yeah. Crayons are great. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan crayons, of Crayons, yeah. Uh, if you've got young kids, crayons are absolutely yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I have grin, ten. Gr oh, yeah, God, now I can't even speak properly. I'm having a great night. Um, uh, yeah, I have ten, ten grandchildren, so I uh, <laughs> uh, crayons are still very much in textures yeah, I, I, and a covered cleaning crayons. Cleaning crayons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cleaning crayons a lot. Actually, I, so. I, online learning with crayons. I think this could be a big thing. I mean, we all share this in common. <laughs> We're all, we've all done online learning. We're all, I, I think this could be this could be a new thing. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Just throwing that out there. Uh, I, I could do the art. If anyone makes money off it, send me ten percent. <laughs> Robert could do. Yeah. What could you do, Robert, with crayons? Well, with crayons, I don't know. Use them for candles. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't really have a use for crayons at the moment. I work <laughs> and I sleep and I talk to Sarah and that's about all I do. Soon I'll be starting exercise, so that will exercise. be something else. Yes. Exercise with crayons. Mm. Oh. Using, using my Bowflex. A Bowflex, is that like the one where you like it like this? Um, no, it has um, oh. these rods that bend. So oh. it's, not, it's not a bad system. Oh. Um, it's pretty compact. For so what this is it like does. home exercise. Yeah, home yeah. exercise. I I I was like yeah I I I I was 
well, going through, you know, I mean, I think we can all relate to this, you know, we've all noticed how, like, you know, you notice over life as, you know, you, you notice yourself getting a bit chubby, so you kind of cut back on some foods, and then you pull it back in, and then you're doing that for a while, and then you start getting chubby again. It's like, what? I didn't, I'm, I'm not eating that food anymore. Why am I getting chubby again? And then you, you find something else. <laughs> no matter how much you keep making those adjustments, it keeps it's sneaking up on you and getting you again. And I kind yeah. of let that really get away on me when I had my son born, and I, 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 I got up to quite a big weight uh, at the start of the year, and I focused while well, not doing it in a rush to do it in a very slow way but I yeah I managed I've managed to knock off about 10, 10 kilograms so about 25 pounds this year but I did I, I added a little bit of exercise in but it was trying to find something that was you know sustainable is the idea mm -hmm. but uh, it's good to do it worked for, yeah it's working I, I stopped exercising two years ago because I, I tore a rotator cuff in my shoulder so letting that heal, take, it takes a long time to heal, and then I just didn't get back into it. But I had been working out since I was 16, like lifting weights at the gym, so I guess I needed a break anyhow. So yeah, yeah. It's time to go back. I, don't know if, you know, I was playing rugby, um, but you know, in Japan, playing rugby is a big commitment. I, and I never played in New Zealand. I only started in Japan. I thought, well, these guys all look really short. I can probably play that here, but it's actually not that easy. Um, but yeah, when I... It's funny, originally I played for health. I thought, you know, play a sport, do something healthy. And then I discovered, as I was getting injured every single game, yeah. I was coming home and I was needing to buy bandages one week or ice packs the next week or, you know, different... <laughs> Slowly my, my bathroom started turning into like a, a war zone triage. It was starting to look like, you know, like Nash. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and, and it clicked with me that I was pretty much, every Monday I was limping into work, covered in like bruises and, and, and carrying some sort of, you know, horrible injuries and sitting on ice packs yeah. and stuff like that. I was realizing that I was enjoying this sport, but it wasn't working very well for my health. Um, <laughs> but the thing is that you, you lose a whole day when you do it because you have to travel like way, you know, you have to travel outside of Tokyo to, to go and do it. So pretty much when my son was born, I, I agree. You know, I, I only get two full days at home on the weekends and I was you know, I wasn't going to lose one of those to, to play a sport. So I stopped exercising because yeah. of that. and I've been trying to find a substitute for it ever since. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, good, good, good when you're getting back into it because yeah. I mean, I and I realize as well that the depressing thing is I know I've found a good balance now. <laughs> I'm back, but yeah, I'm gonna keep doing this and then I'm gonna get fat again anyway, probably in a few years anyway. Mm. But, uh, yeah, my doctor told me to lose some weight, so I've done that. I lost the weight he told me to lose, but my blood sugar was up, so that's why I need to get back into the exercise and I cut out all the simple carbs and. You have you, you guys have never experienced a Japanese health checkup, right? No. No. Well, have you ever been abducted by aliens? No. Because it's something like that. <laughs> I mean, they 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 are thorough on their health checks. Like it's it's kind of well, it's actually I mean it's great that they have so much data that they gather so much data on you. Hmm. Yeah, I mean honestly, I mean so I've I've told the story in one of my videos how like uh, on my very first ever health checkup, I could speak pretty good Japanese, but you know there's certain situations that you know you don't use the the terminology. Special terminology, including like for me, medical situations. I, I just don't know medical terminology. Bend over, <laughs> well, yeah. bend over, I can figure out because I had a girlfriend. But, <laughs> but for example, you know, the thing was, I remember at one point, cough. I need well, <laughs> we're getting closer to that. So it's like, first of all, they, they 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 take blood, and then you know, it's like I've never really given much blood, like for for a health checkup before. And you know, and then you're doing like ultrasounds, and you know they they they're doing all kinds of checks, you know, very thorough checks. And then the nurse comes up, and she gives me a little white cup, and she points to the toilet, and she says, "No, you got to fill this cup up." And I never, I didn't know what the word meant, "no," and so I, I, and I was too embarrassed to ask, so I went into the toilet and I sat down, <laughs> looking at the cup, and I'm thinking, "What are my options here?" <laughs> and what the are the nurse came in with you, you know. of being wrong? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, really good idea to carry a dictionary to your first ever health check. Can you demonstrate, the please? <laughs> I was just thinking, of, you know, you've all seen the right stuff. I was just thinking, you know, do I have to start humming a tune or something? Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is that they are, you know, they're kind of brutal as well. Like they really expect you know, the Japanese standards of healthy and the zones that they allow you for all these different metrics. You know, for like you know, literally fifty different metrics and. 
I got my first ever F on my last health checkup, which was on weight. And I was only, uh, I'm supposed to be like, a Japanese person, my height is supposed to be 74 kgs, and I was like 93. <laughs> but 93, they put F, and I'm like, well, F? <laughs> what does F mean? So I looked at what, what F means, because usually they'll, you know, they'll say for the different scores, and F said, like, literally, check yourself into hospital immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm 10 kilos overweight. I'm a bit chubby. F, F for fucked. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So get that on a, on, a, on, a, on a weight thing. I'm thinking. I mean, that's literally F for you know. Fat. So I, I, I don't know. I hear it's kind of abusive. But it's a nice thing. Being in Japan as well, and this is something you got to be read for if you ever come here. Like in Japan, it's one of those wonderful things about culture. You know. Things, some things you, you can, you know, that you'd say every day in in Western culture are like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that, you horrible person in, in Japanese, and the yeah. reverse is also true. Japanese, just like who are the most polite, who are the most considerate, the politest people you'll ever meet uh, culturally anywhere in the world, like on average. Sometimes they just come up with something mm. which just is like, what did you just say? So the two I like to pull out of that, you know, honestly, I'll see an old friend and say, hey. How's it going? You put on weight. <laughs> uh, you got <don't> fat. <laughs> Even chubby. What are you doing? Are you eating too much? What's wrong with you? you know, like, truly, there's no. But and you flip it around. It took me a while to figure this one out. But I remember hearing Japanese talking about uh, short legs. There's a specific word for short legs. And, uh, and they were talking about it kind of like you know in kind of hushed tones. I was like, you know, what's that word? Uh, short legs. And like, don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> oh, why not? And I'm like. <laughs> Because that is the worst thing you can say to someone in Japanese. Never say it. Oh, what do you mean? What, just, what, is, 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 to call someone stumpy is like is, is a problem. It's like, I don't put in people who are stumpy. So they're, they're cool. They're like, no, no, never say that. Never say that. Well, and uh, they, were, they were like making a really big deal out of it. And the reason is like stumpiness you, you're born with as far as they can. It's genetic, right? There's nothing. You, you can't change it. You're stuck with that. So it's unfair to attack someone over stumpy legs. But uh, weight is something that, you know, as far as in Japan is concerned, it's like brushing your hair, you know, if you have hair. Um, you know, it's uh, it's something you can control. <laughs> it's, it's your appearance, basically. And, and, and it's like saying, say, to, saying to someone, you know, you're, you're a fat asshole is like saying your shirt is untucked, your fly is open. <laughs> you know, you yeah. just told them. But, uh, uh, man, the power of the stumpy bomb. I, I, I've, I've used it once in anger. And uh, I, I used to have a, a kohai, a, a junior guy. Um, I, I kind of had a, had a bit of a thing with a girl in one of my first jobs, but um, she yeah. was very good looking, and 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 there were very not not many women and a lot of guys in that company, and it was kind of I, I kept it very very quiet that I was kind of uh, quietly going out with her. I was hanging out with this with kohai I had, who was like one of the worst. How can I put it? He's just like a. He's got a real foul mouth on him. He's always bad mouthing people and stuff. He's got a real dark sense of humor. But one day he was like out drinking, and he kind of said, "Simon, yeah, he go, I've got to, I've got to tell you, you know, like, um, I've got, I've got, I've really got a thing for uh, such and such son, you know, for Tanaka son." I was like, "Really?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I, I, I really, I think I really love her." I was like, oh. Well, that, and this was my girlfriend, you know, I, 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 I couldn't tell him this. So I just said, uh, actually, you know, I hear that she just doesn't really like stumpy guys. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this guy, who, who, who honestly is like one of the worst behaved guys I've ever seen, met in my life, he started crying in front of me when, when I said that. <laughs> mm. Wow. I mean, uh, oh, wow. Oh, and I still didn't tell him. He doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and he was stumpy. In my defense, he really was stumpy, but, you know. Well, that's okay, then. <laughs> it was a, it was a powerful, it's a powerful weapon, so never use it in anger. <laughs> use it wisely. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to pass, pass that information on all, all, all our sort of colleagues in, 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 who have headed off to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, it's Useful a good one tip. to keep in your back pocket. That's what I say. If 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 you're really getting, if you're really back up against the wall, uh, yeah, it's it's like the the grenade that'll clear the room. But, uh, hmm. Be careful with that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, well, we have another grenade that clears the room quite often. The term of the week. The term of the uh, week. But he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Hello. He gave me the term oh, did, of the did, week. Did he give you a term beforehand? He did. Yeah. The oh, silent God. duck. 
So what is the term? The term is the, the silent duck. The what? The silent duck. Okay. The silent duck. Now, the silent duck, the shape a hand tends to employ to participate in the act of fisting at the point of entry. This later <laughs> branches out into the full fist. Two silent duck, to threaten an enemy with a silent duck shape, they will then know that you definitely mean business and will desist immediately. <laughs> and so that's, what? that's I mean, from our friend in duck, Florida. I think there's... Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> whack, whack. Uh. <laughs> oh, that's so. Uh, I, I, I would be fully persuaded uh, by the time of the first duck. Little, I don't know how you'd even get to two ducks. <laughs> mm. <laughs> because I'm trying to persuade I would never want to get anywhere one. near a duck. <laughs> Let alone. Oh. Wow. I, also don't wanna, I don't want to even go near where somebody put the name duck with that or what happened to the ducks. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, so someone disliked the show. Maybe maybe that terms. was maybe they were a bit premature. <laughs> I've noticed that we've got one dislike. Oh, we should have done, we should have run the term of the week earlier. We would have got more dislikes. <laughs> <laughs> You're not trying hard enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's too bad it's uh, early in the morning. <laughs> I could start drinking. Give them the give them the time. Look, I mean, I'm sitting here drinking well, tea. I, I do that every week. Yeah. Yeah, you've got it pretty good over there, Simon. Yes. It's 12.25 <laughs> it's, here. It's, so. it's, it's real dudes on Saturday. Oh, it's time for me to drink. Mm. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Time's a good time. Dutch courage. Oop. Indeed. So, are there any, any more comments that we've missed, or uh, has anybody been watching them? Because I haven't. <laughs> No, um, well, I haven't seen Dave said that rain has been spammed. I don't know. I don't know why. Oh. Well, well, the latest comment is from is from Dave, and it, and he says that rain rain has been spammed, or Rainer is the spammer. Oh. Okay. Mine has an update. So oh, well, that's in yeah. relation to G plus. Every every comment everybody uh, makes here goes on to G plus. <laughs> so all, all, all our all our Jeeps are now absolutely flooded with, with with the comments from from the show. <laughs> Yeah, Mikiko is just leaving. It's a bit of a nuisance. Bye, Mikiko. Bye, Mikiko. Oh, she's going to do a hangout. Yes. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Normally, normally, what we do when we end the show, we sort of hang out afterwards and just talk amongst ourselves. But today, mm -hmm. Rain is coming on right after oh. us. Ah, so. so yes, we will. We will let her. We will segue. Ah, which is starting in only three minutes. I see as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, just a quick question, Hiko. Yeah. Um, when you did when you did your Skype interview with Amy Yamato. Yes. Um, can you can you message me and, and tell me how you set that up? Because I'm quite well. She's in our circles, and I'd be quite interested to to get her on the show, as it were. Mm. Ah. Yes. Well, yeah. I I I I, I can. Uh... I mean, she's very private, obviously, so uh, you know it might not be easy to set up the Skype call. It took took a bit of uh, logistical planning, but yes, I can I can certainly. Uh, yeah, just that. just no, message me how, how 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 you go about with it, whether she whether she she exists in real time, <laughs> or whether we have to script everything. Yeah, that that was a very awkward, awkward call. Actually, I, I I was a little bit more forward than I usually am on these things. I thought mm -hmm. it was a one-off opportunity, and you know yeah. she kind of took it the wrong way. <laughs> <I remember that>. <laughs> <laughs> But it's okay. We're all good friends now. Excellent. <laughs> uh, you you gave her the you gave her the two the two terabytes that she was happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Well. Well, uh, yeah, Comic Arena, whose show I was on recently as well. She, I mean, she is awesome, and uh, definitely everybody yeah. watching this should go and switch over to that, as I am going to do myself after this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, we're all going to go and have a look. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. What have we got? Two minutes until she's on? Two or three Plenty minutes? Time. So, so she's, her comments are here, so I guess you just click on her name to go to her channel and check on her feed. It'll have like the new hangout yeah. probably starting up. That's what I'm going to do. But definitely yeah. Go, yeah, click on Comical Rainer and go and check out the new show starting up. If you're still there, Rainer, give us a shout. Are, we, are, are you starting soon? Uh, oh. She must be. She must be starting her thing up by now, though. Yeah, the feed's not up yet, but 
Uh, the feed isn't up. Oh. Yeah. Should be. Should be soon. BD anxiety okay. attack. That was four days ago, so it's not ready yet. So, Rena, you better go and get it again. And we're, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm on your channel. Mm. Her channel's getting big. <laughs> it is. Leave a comment. Leave a comment. Mm. Yeah, she says. No, I have to switch all this off and go. And get mm. Yeah. Well, it's been on? lovely chatting with you guys. Yeah. Thanks for thanks very much. Yeah, you too. Yeah, thanks thanks a lot. Lot. No, it's my, my pleasure. And, and thanks uh, for thanks for the invite. It's, uh, okay, and I, and I hope Liverpool wins. <laughs> so do I. I have no idea. So, yeah, it's away at Everton, so yeah, they, they'd better. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Sorry, sorry, all Everton, Everton fans. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm wearing the wrong coloured shirt tonight, aren't I? I'm going to get in trouble for that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank yes. you. Thanks, guys. And uh, we'll see you next week. Yep. Same you time, same channel. Good. Or more or less the same time. Yeah. Well. It'll be a half hour later next week. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. Hitting the button. Hitting the button.